Good morning, everybody. Sports Live in the ATL. David here. Black Monday. You might be asking yourself, what is Black Monday? Black Monday means the coaching changes and the new looks and uh, the anger, the speculation of the offseason for NFL teams that are not in the playoffs and or have coaches on the bubble are now commencing. We did have a one firing today. Doug Marone of the Jacksonville Jaguars is no longer the head coach of Jacksonville. Now, thank everybody for popping in. This is Sports Live ATL David Road to 3K. Please, if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. Uh, click the notification bell so you'll know when the content comes out. Share it all to your media outlets and click the like button, which is the thumbs up. Uh, really would help my channel out. Thank you very much. I'm um, a little hoarse today. I had a very, 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 very busy Sunday. There was a lot of football to be played and watched on Sunday, and I did all of that and then some. Um, we had the playoff games set for Wild Card Weekend, which, if you notice in the thumbnail, are the two games that I am going to be paying close attention to, and I'm going to be streaming this weekend. The schedule worked out perfectly with the schedule of the games. At least the sports gods, sports gods do like me on this one. Saturday night, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be broadcasting live streaming the Redskins, or I'm sorry, Washington and Tampa Bay. Congratulations to Skins fan all day, to On the Warpath, to Big Simple, to uh, Awesomeness Sports, to Dubs Family, Damien, everybody over there, Yemi. Congratulations. Your Redskins are NFC East champions, albeit with a 7-9 record, but the way I always see is as long as you get in, it doesn't matter the record. I would love to trade places with you. Tom Brady and the bandwagon, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You should win this game, y'all, but I'm clearly going to be pulling for this team because uh, to be one and done would be awesome. But congratulations to them too, Cam Dawson and uh, RTP for representing the Bucks Ballard Sports Media and Bucks Skull Gang. I think those are the only Bucks fans that I really know. I don't really interact with any of them. But I do know they exist, and uh, I do respect the fact that uh, they're fans of their team. So That's going to be Saturday night at 8.15 Eastern Time. I'll be on air around 8.10, 8.05. And I'm going to be doing some videos this week on why Washington will beat Tampa Bay. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean I guarantee it. But why I want to see Washington beat Tampa Bay. So stay tuned to those videos this week. Um, also... Coming up on Sunday at 4.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Worked out perfectly. Thank you very much. The Chicago Bears will be in New Orleans to take on the New Orleans Saints. The Bears, I don't know. I know some Bears fans on here, but uh, if I don't follow you, I'm not going to mention you. Uh, but if y'all have done any interaction with me, congratulations. I know Judah Tribe, uh, Bears fan. Congratulations, sir. And uh, CS is also a Bears fan, so congratulations on making the playoffs. Good luck on Sunday. I'm going to be heavenly pulling, heavenly, or let me go ahead and say the right word. I'm going to be heavy invested on you guys winning. The New Orleans Saints, I give you all a lot of hard time. It's, it's on the rivalry, but congratulations on winning the NFC South for the fourth straight year. But uh, I'm going to be expecting you all to lose on Sunday. So it could be a very good weekend for me, but then again, it could be like an eh. But trust me when I tell you, I'm usually pretty good in the playoffs when it's not my team. Tampa Bay and New Orleans, both of y'all, even if you do get by wild card weekend, you will be done in the divisionals. There won't be a fairy tale ending for you guys. So you better hope you at least get by wild card weekend and get that feeling of happiness once. Because if you lose, well, you already know. But congratulations to uh, Giggles, Algiers, 44 Legendary, Joshua Gus, Chris Fields, Mr. Hudat. Um, uh, who else do I follow? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, Monet504, old school, can't forget him. Representing the Saints, last Jedi, rep in New Orleans. Uh, if I don't follow you, and you don't support my channel, I'm not shouting you because I don't know if you're not over on my channel. But congratulations to the Saints fans. Not the bandwagon, but this is y'all's last ride. Drew Brees is retiring at the end of the playoffs. And like I said, it's going to be a hard reality, guys, but 
uh, good luck to you nonetheless. Now, the second part of this video, I got the box. Four more teams are being introduced to the box this morning or this afternoon. Right here, the proverbial box. As you can see, all the teams that are already in comfortably, the box. It's a place you don't want to be come playoff time, but it is what it is. And again, my team is right here for the third straight year. First team eliminated. Uh, some loyal, a couple of loyal fans that I know on here. BVD. Um, a couple of Scott Zilla, Cardinal fan. Uh, Cattle Dog, longtime Cardinal fan. The only ones that I really know. But the Arizona Cardinals are going to be in the box, the proverbial box, because they are out and will not be going to the playoffs. It's too bad because I thought they had a good chance to uh, to, to upset the Saints or the Bucks. But you got to win your games, man. You got to win your games. And uh, they got beat yesterday by the Rams. So the Arizona Cardinals, you are now in the proverbial box. There you go. You're comfy. You're cozy right there, right in the box. Another team, the second, the team that I hate the most is side of the Saints. I lived in this city 15, 20 years. Don't like the fan base. They're extremely unloyal and bandwagon for all the teams. Uh, Trucker Tim, representation. Uh, that's the only fan that I know of this team uh, here on YouTube that I watch. Miami Dolphins. Dun 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 That's a fight song back in the day. Danny Dolphin. The Miami Dolphins are in the proverbial box. They had a a chance to make the playoffs. They had a lot better year than I've seen. Um but they were not able to make it at the end as the Miami Dolphins are going to be in a place where they have been solely accustomed to for many, many years, not in the playoffs and in the box. So the Miami Dolphins, you are now in the proverbial box. Get comfy. Grab a soda. Get a snack. Another team that's in the box. There's two more teams left. Got a little bit of satisfaction for both of these, although I do like some of their fan base members. I'm going to do this one first. Uh, this one here, Big E, uh, was it uh, um, Beast of the East, Boys for Life, Simus. We don't really talk much, but he did contribute the other day into my live stream. And he's old school, Mosh, Cowboy Face. Um, don't make sure I don't miss anybody, but the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all haven't won anything since 1995, but yet all I do is hear it. I know Dak Prescott got hurt. That was a big blow to y'all. So that kind of derailed everything. The NFC East was a just a horrible division this year. But there had to be one winner. But I do take a little bit of solace and happiness in putting the Dallas Cowboys in the proverbial box. I've had a lot of history with the Cowboys here on YouTube. And uh, so with pleasure and respect, I'm comfortably putting you in the proverbial box. How about them Cowboys? And then last but not least, this team right here, I'm not going to say a little bittersweet, but I still have, you know, a little bit of happiness doing this. But they got a, they got some loyal fans, really passionate fans, Cop Pizzle and Mr. Bad Dog, my dude, uh, Giants fans. Now, there's a couple other Giants fans out there, but I only really interact with these two. Uh, a, a up and down year for these guys, but an up and down year for everybody in the NFC East. By the way, the Falcons will be playing the NFC East next year. So that's going to be fun. Get a chance to rekindle some things. We're playing the Eagles, uh, Cowboys, Washington, and the Giants again next year, if I saw the schedule correctly. Um, so that'll be fun. But the New York football Giants are going in the proverbial box. They had a chance to make the playoffs. All they had to do was, number one, win, and then have Washington lose to Philly, that did not happen. Giants did win. But the Giants had a chance to control their own destiny last week, I believe, or the week before. So you need to be able to hold your own. You can't really you can't really count on others. you got to do your job. But they did what they had to do yesterday. But unfortunately, it didn't work out the way that they needed to. So the New York football Giants, the G-Men, are going in the proverbial box. So there you go. It's starting to fill up and get a little heavy. 
has four new participants will be in the box and six new six participants will be in the box after wild card weekend hello hello giants hello everybody arizona it's dark in here it's cold i'm scared hello it's okay it's okay guys i'm gonna take care of you you're comfy so that takes care of the proverbial box um that takes care of the stream as far as the streams that I'm going to do next weekend or this weekend, Wild Card Weekend, the Saints and the Bears, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Washington football team. Again, I still can't have a hard time calling them anything other than the Redskins. I do have a couple of shirts that I'm going to get today that a co-worker of mine did. I did promote it uh, the other day on my live stream, and I will do a video tonight uh, showing you the shirts. Um, one of them is going to be mine. Camel's going to have the other two. If you're interested in getting any shirts, let me know. She does with the screen print shirts, and she's a she's a coworker, so I know her well. And they are $25 a piece. Uh, she can do all the teams, and she does it pretty fast. And you'll be able to see the finished product uh, tonight. Um, again, some thoughts. I, I did this. If you want to go back and look after the recap uh, the, of the season, um, again, I will say this is has been a very disappointing year for the Falcons. And for myself, as a Falcons fan, I expected a lot more from this team. Blowing all the games that we did, six games late in the fourth quarter, Falcons realistically should be in the playoffs with 10 or 11 wins. But you are what your record is. If you don't make the plays, then you're not going to win ball games. Matt Ryan, again, I believe, has got an unfair, an unfair attachment of negativity to this team. Um, I stated that a lot during the stream yesterday or last night. Um, the numbers don't, the numbers speak for themselves, everybody. If you look at yourself in the mirror, again, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to root for the team, but if you look at yourself in the mirror, this defense is why we have not been in the playoffs uh, in the last in three years, why we've had three straight losing seasons, and why this history overall has not been able to get it done. Because you look back at the teams, the good teams that we've had in the 90s, 2000s, it's been about defense the majority of the time. Just cannot make plays in the playoffs. Blowing games, big leads, home games, just you name it. So if you want to know more about that, go look at the, uh, the stream uh, called the Falcons a Recap Rant. And I talk about it, but I'm, as you can tell my voice, I'm pretty much dead of talking about it again. Uh, because now what we got to look forward to this week as far as Falcons is what are we going to do for the head coach? There are some interviews that have already been done with Raheem Morris. Eric Bieniemy is scheduled to interview today. I hope Arthur Blank really takes his time because um, I want the, him to bring the, a Super Bowl championship winning coach here. I want him to bring an offensive-minded coach who can focus on the offense, who's not afraid to change the calls if need be, um, somebody who's not afraid to look and get into the faces and hold people accountable. Um, I also want to get a general manager, a Super Bowl championship general manager, who's going to pick the right Super Bowl championship coach, who's going to pick the right Super Bowl championship offensive coordinator, who can make plays and be more creative and stop being so predictable and utilize the talents that we have better. I want the new general manager to bring in a Super Bowl championship defensive coordinator who's going to be able to get players on the team and coach these players on the team, these Super Bowl championship-type players to make plays, one who understands that third down is a pass rushing down, uh, understand that you got to stop rushing four guys when they're not the biggest in the world because uh, we've been doing this for years. Um, somebody who understands what defense actually is and pays attention. So that's what I'm hoping happens. I don't care who the coach is. I've said this before. The, 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 the name of the coach is, is, is not important. It's the type of coach. I don't want a good general manager. I want a Super Bowl championship general manager mindset. I don't want a good defensive coordinator. I want a Super Bowl championship defensive coordinator mindset. I don't want a Super Bowl champion. I, I mean, I don't want a good offensive coordinator. I want a Super Bowl championship mindset offensive coordinator. And I certainly don't want a good head coach. 
I want a Super Bowl championship mindset head coach. I'm sick and tired year after year, year after year, saying next year. I'm sick and tired of seeing the Atlanta Falcons constantly fail year in and year out. Your mindset should be wanting to win a Super Bowl. I've said this every year on YouTube. I've said this every day of my life as a sports fan. Okay? I don't take solace in not winning a championship. I don't take solace in coming in second. I don't take solace in coming in third. I don't take solace in getting a high draft pick. I don't take solace in individual accomplishments. This is a team and a game and a sport that you want to see your team be the best in the world. You know, Patriots, Packers, Steelers, 49ers, Cowboys of the past, Raiders of the past, Giants. What do they have in common? They want to win Super Bowls. You know, Atlanta, for some reason, does not have the mindset. And if they do... They're just not that good in the clutch because I've never seen a team in an organization fail so much in the playoffs. I've never seen an organization fail so much with draft picks, fail so much with the, un with the understanding of what is the actual problem. I've said this a million times. In the last 15 years or so, the Falcons' premise seems to be offense as opposed to defense when offense is rarely the problem. If y'all put forth as much effort in getting the championship-type players on defense as you do on offense, the team could be unbeatable. Not literally, but really dominating with the offense that we have. You know, every now and then the Falcons will get lucky and pick some good players on defense. Grady Jarrett, um, uh, Foye Olikun, <coughs> um, I have a hard time trying to pick out anybody else on defense that has been consistently good. Keanu Neal has had opportunities. Deion Jones is a good one. But what do you what do you really do? The Falcons have this knack of drafting hopefuls. I don't know if y'all actually scout these players. Because some of these players that y'all have drafted has just been utterly horrible. Duke Riley, Vic Busley, Tack McKinley, Desmond Trufant had some decent moments, but not still not for what we were paying them. And this is all defense, by the way. Um, Isaiah Oliver, Marlon Davidson hadn't really been on the field. He's been injured, but what the hell's going on with him? Um, just to name a few. They, these guys look lost out there. They look totally confused. And it's not just one week or every other time. It's every game. So you're trying to tell me as the season goes, they can't get better? You know, A.J. Terrell showed some upside as the season went on. But Oliver looked lost all the way through the year. Tag McKinley didn't even finish the year. You know, Vic Busley's gone. Duke Riley was gone a couple years ago, and he was here too long. You know, just horrible. And I could keep going down the list, but there's no point. This Falcon team... Defense wins championships. You can't have just a really good offense and expect to outscore everybody. You got to make some stops every now and then, guys. It's ridiculous. All we needed was one stop in every game that we blew, and we would and we would have ten or eleven wins. But um, I'm tired of, of looking at next year. I'm tired of not winning a Super Bowl. Um, I love the team a lot with passion, and I root with passion and loyalty. And I deserve to see this team win something. Um, it was taken away in 2016. And I didn't think it would be so hard to get back. But when Dan Quinn never recovered after that, the Falcons never recovered after that. But moving forward, uh, there's, a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I firmly believe Atlanta is going to get this turned around. I don't see it being a fourth straight non-playoff season. But if it happens and they get into the playoffs next year, what are you going to do in the playoffs? Are you are you okay with just making it after three years of not going? No. Get a Super Bowl championship. Get the right people in here with a Super Bowl championship mindset, and let's get a ring. 
let's, let's stop getting laughed at. And uh, so it is what it is. And um, uh, I'm just glad the season's over for us for, in game-wise because now I can relax. Because they were giving me so many headaches, so many pains. I think I grew m a lot more gray hair than I normally do. Thank God I shave. And I think I, I think I aged about 15 years this year. And I think I have more aches and pains in my body than I ever have. Because this team has frustrated me mentally all year. Just the worst season that I've ever, ever experienced. And I want to give a couple shout-outs before I end the premiere uh, to some loyal uh, sports supporters of my channel this year. Um, as far as participation in my chats, in my streams every premiere, usually in game stream, uh, Asia Green, Paul Mack, Robbie White, Rise Up ATL, um, Mr. Hudak, Chris Fields has been in most. Um, a Fizzle Production, obviously, uh, has been a huge supporter of my channel. Thank you very much, my dude. AF DeVille. Um, and these are guys that are, are here constantly. I'm not going to shout people who just come sporadically. These are people, if I can remember, that come in and support the channel all the time. Take time out of their day. When they see something pop up, they stop and they come on and support the stream and whatever premiere I'm doing and interact with my people and want to come on StreamYard, everything. Um, CS, uh, Skull Bucks, I think I got Skull Bucks gang. He's in a lot of my stuff. Um, and if I miss some people, I'm sorry, but this is at the top of my head because I wanted to show say thank you. And thank you for all the new subscribers that have recently come still it's still, it's still a struggle to get to 3K. I'm working on it, trying to keep pumping out the content for you guys, but I, I'm going to get it. Um, but thank you uh, for the support on my channel. Thank you, everybody, who continues to, 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 to love what I do and watch, watch what I do because the old adage, I, can't, I wouldn't be able to have so much fun on here uh, if it wasn't for you guys. I always love doing the videos and the games and the stream. But it wouldn't be the same without a lot of y'all's participation. Um, so thank you very much. And it's going to be a, uh, a fun uh, hockey season, a fun basketball season. It's going to be an interesting offseason. Going to chance to take a break a lot, especially because once the NFL playoffs are over, I don't really talk a lot about football on YouTube, and I'm not. I'm going to take a break. I'm, I'll come on when breaking news happens, but I'm not one of those – Falcon fans or sports video makers that's going to talk about the draft and all this kind of stuff. I don't have time. I'm too busy. So the Falcon fix is going to be for another couple of weeks, the playoffs, and then I'm going to shut down the football talk for the most part and focus on the, the Hawks and Calgary Flames and the Atlanta Braves uh, and everything. So thank you very much for a fun Falcon season despite it being so horrible. Thanks for everybody coming in. Uh, that's why I call myself the best Atlanta Falcons video maker on YouTube, Atlanta sports representative on YouTube, because I, I bring it and, and I look forward to doing it. I bring a lot of passion. You guys see it and, uh, hopefully we'll get it turned around next year. So anyways, uh, this is a pretty long premiere, almost 24 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Uh, again, road to three K subscribe to the channel, share to your media outlets, click the notification bell and the like button and support the channel and each other. So until Soon, until later, Sports 5 in the ATL. David, thank you, everybody. I will see you in the next one.